organizers for inviting me here to this uh, talk. A really great place, and um, yeah, um, great. Uh, just one quick question: Is there a clicker? Oh, okay. Yep. Thank you. The was right. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. My own. I'll be left. <laughs> great. So. Um, my name is um, Maria Kovalenko, and I work for the Science for Life Extension Foundation, which is a small nonprofit, and we're based in Moscow, in Russia. And um, well, this is the topic of my talk. It's transhumanism. Um, I, well, <laughs> from the look of your faces, I don't think that um, many of you have. Um, um, come upon this uh, term. So let me um, explain what this means and how uh, transhumanism is um, uh, tied actually very closely together with organization of science. So um, transhumanism is an ideology that, um, that places the life of a human being um, as the main as the ultimate value. And uh, transhumanism, oh, sorry, okay. Um, it, um, <clears throat> it is seeking to advance the human abilities with the help of new uh, emerging technologies. And the well, final goal of uh, transhumanism is making our lives much better, much longer, much healthier, more enjoyable. Uh, transhumanism aims at uh, eliminating pain and suffering, at eliminating diseases, and um, basically transhumanism is um, seeking to um, defend the main human right, which is actually life. Because regardless of what we enjoy in our everyday lives, well, some people like football, some people um, find joy with, um, you know, interacting with their families and their friends, some people like money, some people like sex, some people like, you know, um, science, some people like drinking beer. Well, regardless of what you like in, love, in life, you actually need to be alive to experience the joy from all those things that you like. So transhumanism sets uh, the priority, the goal of securing uh, life. So um, how can that be done? Um, obviously with um, the help of science, with the help of scientific research. And here is the list of um, um, directions, various areas that um, have um, very much um, that have potential of increasing human lifespan and um, significantly improving the quality of life. We can slow down aging. We can grow new organs instead of the failing, diseased, um, or damaged ones. We can create artificial organs um, <coughs> using material science. We can. Um, use therapeutic cloning as a um, source of cells for applications um, of regenerative medicine. We can create longevity viruses, uh, basically use um, viral vectors and um, transfer longevity genes, the, the good genes, the ones that um, if we make them active, they prolong our lifespans. Um, well, cryonics. And this is uh, preservation of the dead body um, at the temperature of liquid nitrogen. I call cryonics as the best possible scenario in the worst possible case. It's like when you're dead, so you can um, at least try, you know, to get this chance, to get the chance to find yourself in the future. Um, <clears throat> Neuromodeling and mind uploading. This is very a very interesting topic because, um, well, probably at some point at some point of time in the future we'll be able to um, upload our consciousness to a non-biological substrate. 
and there are people who are uh, doing research in this area. And the final um, research um, direction is the artificial intelligence. It can uh, change our lives really, really quite dramatically. But let's start with the things that uh, can be done today. So fighting aging. Um, here are just three examples of the advances that have been uh, done so far. Robert Schmidt Reese from the University of Arkansas uh, was able to extend a lifespan of a nematode, the worm, tenfold, just, just think about it, ten times longer. The, the worms, <coughs> they normally live two weeks, so his worms, they lived half a year. There was just one mutation. So the intervention was very simple, and it was in a evolutionary conserved gene, the ones that the one that we all share with the worm. Maria Blasco uh, from Madrid, she inserted the telomerase gene in a virus vector, and she basically infected mice with longevity. And her um, old mice, the two-year-old mice, they uh, started to live 20% longer, and that was done without, with no harm to their health. And um, here's an, an example of a Russian researcher who was able to uh, also quite significantly increase the lifespan of uh, Drosophilus roughly by 50% by, <clears throat> by activating the GAD45 gene, which is responsible for uh, DNA repair. We know actually quite a lot of substances that can extend lifespan. And um, if we, oh, sorry, um, how, can, how do I go back? Mm. So if we um, uh, take a look at the, um, the list and the, the previous yeah, <coughs> thing, uh, there are some uh, things here that are regular FDA-approved drugs, like rapamycin, like informin, well, melatonin is a, um, it's even a supplement. So it's, and curcumin, it's in the curry. So there are substances that are shown in uh, model animals uh, to cause um, really good, positive um, longevity results. So, the, so, we have some ideas about potential interventions. So how do we um, test? Um, how do we see if they really work in humans? Because all of the work is done in all animals, right? So we need to transfer those great successes to humans. So therefore, we need to create a um, diagnostic platform of aging. Right now, um, when you go to a hospital, you, there is no doctor who, can, who you can turn to and say, um, you know what, doctor, I've got a problem, I'm aging. Like, people will laugh at you, literally. There's an endocrinologist, there's a gynecologist, there's a dentist, there's whatever. Uh, but there's no um, person who um, can test you or advise you on aging. So, there's the idea that we need to uh, change the situation. We would like to... Um, transfer to the clinic a um, comprehensive system of um, biological markers that will tell us exactly what's happening within our cells, how effective autophagy is, how effective protein turnover is, what's happening with our DNA, how efficiently the damage in DNA is, um, um, well, repaired, and other things. And, um, that to, to do that, we need to test the listed um, genes and proteins, the activity of genes. And uh, we do have really great examples, for example, rapamycin, which is actually an immune person drug, and it's, um, well, something that there are patients, there are people who are taking this drug, but it has uh, one really great um, quality. It was shown to increase the lifespan in mice, in really old mice. The mice were 600 days old in this experiment. Well, if we, um, well, let's say 65-year-old human, well, that's the equivalent. 
So these mines, they lived 14% um, longer just by, um, just by eat, eating rapamycin with their food. And um, let's, let's, let's see if that would work in humans in order to assess the efficiency of um, drugs like, like rapamycin. We need <clears throat> the diagnostic platform. Okay, so if um, we're not talking about slowing down aging, if we're already in the situation when our liver is, like we have cirrhosis, for example, or something else, like we have a, um, a kidney failure, what can we do? Well, the idea is to, let's try to um, create new organs from scratch using a scaffold and uh, our own cells. And uh, well, this is what we've done in Russia. We have transferred the technology of um, Professor Paola Maccherini, who has successfully uh, performed transplants of tissue engineered tracheas. And uh, we're very, very happy to um, say that even in Russia, the, the, well, the things like that, they can be done. And it's all about the organization of science. It's about the, uh, securing the right amount of funding, Finding the, the the dedicated people and um, um, and it is possible to achieve really really great results. Um, well, organs can be um, engineered using the approach of therapeutic cloning. It's when um, you well there are two types of clone co uh, reproductive cloning. It's we all know the um, story of the dolly sheep, but this is not what, what I'm talking about. It's about um, acquiring the right type of cells, the ones that you need if you um, need hepatocytes. You, they can be created from your own cells using this approach. If you need neurons, they can be created. We can also 